we reach the prayer time, we will take them. Okay. Now, tonight, God wants to talk about, or should I say, God is asking us to rule in the midst of our enemies. God is asking you to rule in the midst of your enemies. You know, many times we have thought that we are waiting on God, whereas God is waiting for us to move. God is waiting for us to rule. That's when we reach the Red Sea. And we were there saying, what should we do? Moses turned to cry to God. And God said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Moses has been given governmental authority. He's been given the rod of God. And he's supposed to turn to cry to God. There are many people who are crying to God. And yet God is waiting saying, do it now, dear rule. Rule. Exercise your authority. And tonight, God wants to show us how we ought to rule in the midst of our enemies. The world as we are today is, as we are in today, is an enemy territory. The Bible says we are aliens, pilgrims in this world. We are in enemy's territory. Our enemies are not, are not human beings. Human beings are simply tools of the enemy. The, the Bible says your arch enemy, the devil, is moving around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He may use human beings as his tools, but you, spanners is not something you should quarrel with. You don't quarrel with your tools, so you quarrel with the real enemy, the real instigator of the trouble, Satan. And, 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 and that is the one that God wants us to rule in their midst. When we deal with Satan, his tools stay unemployed. His tools are completely you know, unemployed when we deal with him. Praise the Lord. So tonight, let us just read, let us read from Psalm 110, Psalm 110, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 110, verses 1 to 3. It says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Verse 3, Your people shall be volunteers or willing in the day of your power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning you have the dew of your youth we stop there so in in ruling in the midst of your enemies the first thing god wants you to understand is that your enemies have been made your footstool yes from where we've just read he said the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand Till I make your enemies your footstool. These words, these words were originally, you know, re referred to Jesus Christ. He is the Lord whom the Lord spoke to. Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. But there is a miracle that took place from that time it was spoken to the time of the New Testament. The miracle that took place is that we, you and me, all of us who have given our life to Christ were co-opted to become members of the body of Christ. In fact, the Bible says that in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible say, says that when Jesus was raised from the dead, we were raised together with him. And when he ascended, we ascended together with him. And that we are sitting together with him in the heavenly places. So we are members of his body and that is why we are sitting where he is sitting right now he is our head and we are members of the body 
and the enemies under our feet. In fact, in that Ephesians chapter 1, if you read from verse 19 down, the Bible talks about where Christ is seated. Uh, it says, in fact, okay, let me read from verse 20 down. The Bible says, which he walked, that is Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 20 to 23. It says, which he walked in Christ Jesus, or which he walked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Maybe let's just stop there. That is where Jesus is seated. And that is where we are seated together with him, far above principalities and powers. So when God said, my Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Guess what? The enemy has been made his footstool. And because we are in him, the same enemy is also under our feet. Glory be to Jesus. The same enemy is also under our feet. All powers of sorcery, all powers of divination, all powers of bewitchment, all powers of witchcraft, all demonic powers of all shades and kind. Whether they be principalities, whether they be powers, whether they be dominions, they are under our feet. And God wants you to know that. And when you know that, you stop fretting about the powers of darkness. You start taking the same side with God. God wants you to know that you are seated with Christ in the heavenly places and that the enemy is under your feet. And you must behave as one whom the enemy is under his feet. You must speak as one whom the enemy is under his feet. You must address things as one whom the enemy is under his feet. God wants you to understand, to know, and to respond, both in behavior, in faith, in utterances, in everything, as one. Who has his enemies under his feet? God says your enemy is under your feet. Glory be to God. What God promised Jesus in the Old Testament, he has done, he did it together with us as his body. The least among us is greater than all devils. He has authority over all devils. Casting out devils, thrashing, trampling on devils under our feet, is not for pastors. It's not for the highly anointed. It is for every child of God. For every child of God. When you become a child of God, you have a special relationship with God that allows you to use that name, Jesus. There is power in that name to heal. There is power in that name to cast out devils. At the mention of that name, Jesus, hell trembles. Except you don't have relationship with God. But if you do have relationship with God, you have every authority of heaven backing you up to use that name. Praise the Lord. Now, but not only that the enemy is under your feet, but from where we've just read, we also read that God has given us authority to rule in the midst of our enemies. Let's look at it again, verse 2. Verse 2, it says, The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. How does God send the rod of our strength out of Zion? This was talking about Jesus. It was talking about Jesus. <laughs> but you know what? We are in him now as he is. So are we in the world. The way he operated is the way we are also to operate. The equipment he was given is the equipment that we have been given. Glory be to God. That's why he said, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater works than this shall you do because I go to the Father. At one point he said, as my Father has sent me, so send I you. Now, so you have to understand, what is the rod, or the, uh, the rod of his strength? The rod of his strength is the word of God in his mouth. The word of God in his mouth is the rod of his strength. Glory be to God. In fact, in Revelations chapter 19, 
verse 15. The Bible says, Revelation chapter 19, verse 15. The Bible says, Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of, of iron. He himself traced the one praise of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. I want you to note that the Bible says out of his mouth comes a sword. And the Bible says he uses it to strike the earth. The earth. And the Bible describes that sword that comes out of his mouth as a rod of iron with which he rules. Praise the Lord. Do you know that every time you speak the word of God, you are releasing authority. You are ruling with the rod of iron. When you take side with God and you speak what God has said about the circumstances and situations in which you are in, when you speak the word of God to your circumstances, when you speak the word of God to your situation, when you speak the word of God to the things you meet, the mountains that you meet, when you speak the word of God, you know what God says, to the powers of darkness that are around, you are ruling with, with, with the rod of iron. You are releasing strength. In fact, in another scripture, Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, God, God, God dropped a hint about this. He said, out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. God says the strength is ordained in your mouth. When you take carry the word of God in your mouth, because you have a relationship with God, you are releasing strength. When you speak the word of God to sickness in your body, you are releasing strength, pushing the sickness away. When you speak the word of God to your circumstances and situation, when you speak the word of God against demons, you are releasing strength. They cannot stand. You are not releasing your strength. You are releasing the strength of God, and no power of darkness is able to stand. The Bible says, even in the mouth of babes and sucking infants, God has ordained that same strength. When they take the word of God in their mouths, it releases exactly the same strength. It has no regard for age. It has no regard for, uh, for position. It has no regard for any of those things. Only that you should be a covenant child of God and believe. Glory be to God. Out of the mouth of babes and sucking infants, God has released strength. You know, the, the Bible said this strength will come in, in Psalm 110, verse 2, that we, we read. The Bible said, The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Where is Zion? Zion is the dwelling place of God. Where is the dwelling place of God now? The dwelling place of God is not a stage that has been set up in an auditorium. The dwelling place of God is not any house that has been decorated with a cross on top. God does not dwell in temples made by, made by man. But in God can put his name there to be honored. But he's not dwelling there. Guess where God is dwelling? Where is God's Zion? We are the living Zions of God. God dwells in us. The Bible says, Know you, know you not that you are the temple of God, that the Holy Spirit dwells in you? You are the temple of God. So it is out of you that God will send out this strength. It is out of you that the Lord will send out this rod of strength. And it's already there. It is for you to take your place. To believe it, take your place. He said, look, rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. God said, begin to behave like a holy police. When you see things happening that ought not to happen, know that someone is trespassing. A power of darkness is trespassing. He is doing what he ought not to do. When you see sickness in your body, treat it as a trespass. A, you know, a trespass. Don't begin to say, ah, this thing has come again. By the time you say something like that, you're already defeated. Declare, this is a trespass. This body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and this thing ought not to be here. You are trespassing. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. You have to rule. It takes authority 
in the kingdom of heaven is released through the spoken word. But make sure your spoken word aligns with what God has said. Glory be to God. Rule in the midst of your enemy. Do you know you can, you can rule? It doesn't matter how many enemies surround you. You can rule consistently in their midst and they are unable to do anything. Daniel was able to do it in the old covenant. Even when he doesn't have the privilege of, of, that we have now of Jesus who died and, and we resurrected with him and now we are seated with him. Daniel didn't have that kind of authority. But he was able to rule when he was made the president or the chairman of all the witches and witch wizards of diviners and sorcerers. They couldn't do him anything. He ruled in their midst. How much more you, as a child of God in a new covenant, the new, a covenant of life, the covenant of glory. Glory be to God. God says rule in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. And the third thing you need to know here is that when you begin to use that power, when you begin to use that authority, and begin to rule, when you speak confidently, when you address things that you see that are out of place, you address them according to what the Word of God says about them. When you speak it out confidently, boldly, they will obey you. Things will begin to happen. You, you know, the power of God will be experienced around about you. And God says something unique will happen around you when you begin to do that. In Psalm 110 that we read, Verse 3, the Bible says, Your people shall be willing in the day of your power. He said, when you begin to rule in the midst of your enemies, when you refuse to be on a retreat, when you refuse to complain and murmur, when you are on offense, when you believe the word and stand by the word to speak the word and speak what the word of God says, you know, I, I, my, I, one of my in-laws, he fell down and broke his leg when he's almost 80 and, and diabetic. And uh, the doctors and all the people who know medicine say, this one, there's nothing they can do. You have to cut off the leg because at your age and then you're diabetic, there is no way you can make it. But I was with him recently and then he said something. He said, immediately I fell. And I saw that my leg has broken. He said, I made a declaration. I spoke out immediately. This leg, you will heal. You will not be cut off. And guess what? They carried him to hospital. The hospital said they should cut it off. He said, no, don't worry. It will heal. When I saw him, he was walking. He even climbed upstairs with that leg, almost 80. The leg healed. He's walking now. He ruled in the midst of his enemies. That is what God has called us to do. And the Bible says, when you begin to do that, he said the people around you will see the power of God. And they'll become willing followers of Jesus. They will join you. They will become willing to join you to follow Jesus. He said, in the days of your power, your people shall be willing. They become willing to join you, to join the army of the Lord. They become willing to stand with Jesus. They have seen the faithfulness of Jesus in your life. They have seen the power of Jesus in your life. When you start ruling in the midst of your enemies, then they will become volunteers. They will become willing in the day of your power. That day of your power is today. It is now that God wants you to start ruling in the midst of your enemies. The day of your power is today. The rod is already there. In fact, in, in Romans chapter 10, from verse 6 to 9, the Bible says, don't say, don't, don't, don't be complaining in your mind. Don't say to yourself, hey, this situation is beyond measure. Who will go up to heaven and bring Jesus down? He said, don't say, hey, this one is too much. Who will go down to hell and bring Jesus up? He said, what does the righteousness that is by faith say? He said, it says, the word is in your heart and in your mouth. 
the word of faith that we preach unto you. That if you should confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, he said you would have activated power. If you believe in your heart and then speak it out with your mouth, you would have activated power. Every thought of helplessness, every thought of despair is of the devil. It is a planting of the devil. It's meant to deceive you. It's meant to weaken you. It's meant to defeat you. Don't bow to it. Your power is already there. The rod is in your mouth. Rule in the midst of your enemies. And as you begin to do that, the Bible says people will see. And they will become volunteers. They will become willing to follow your Jesus. They will say, sure, is this thing like this? Ah, that's my brother-in-law now. They are, they are coming to see. They are coming to see. Ah, you mean this thing is possible like this? Glory be to God. The Bible says they will be volunteers. They will be willing in the day of your power. But that's not where the story ends. I like this one. That same verse 3. It, it says, that same verse 3. It says, when he, after saying, your people shall be volunteers or willing in the day of your power, he says, then he added something else. In the beauty of holiness, from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. What does that mean? You know, it sounds very poetic, but if you don't know what it means, you are lost. It simply means that, look, the people shall not only be willing, holiness will become beautiful for them. You know, there are some people who think that holiness is square. Holiness is, is, is uh, archaic. Holiness is something that is not attractive or beautiful. Glory be to God. You know, there's a beauty that accompanies holiness. There's a beauty of holiness. Only the holy can appreciate. And so God is saying, look, not only that they will be willing, but holiness will become beautiful for them. It will be in the beauty of, of, of holiness. And not only that, that holiness will become beautiful for them. He says also that the womb of the morning will, be, will deliver to you a youthful renewer. Will be, will, the womb of the morning will deliver to you uh, a, a, a renewal of youthfulness every day. <laughs> you know, many of us don't know that the morning has a womb. The morning has a womb. That's why many people wake up depressed. Their morning was pregnant with depression, with anxiety, with everything. So they wake up depressed with what the morning was pregnant with. But what, what God is saying here is this, that when you begin to rule in the midst of your enemies, when you believe this and begin to speak the word, live by the word, speak the word, believe the word, he says your morning becomes pregnant with the dew of your youth, becomes pregnant with a renewing encounter, a pregnant with a renewing vigor, pregnant with, 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 with a renewer. That keeps you youthful, so to speak. Give you, keep your vitality going. Keep you vigorous every blessed day of your life. When you start ruling in the midst of your enemies, the morning will deliver to you from its womb a renewal of your youth. It will deliver to you vigor. It will deliver to you vitality. And that is how God wants us to live. That's, what God, that's how God wants us to live. God wants you to know that the enemy is under your feet. So no despair. Don't entertain any thoughts that is contrary to that. About the powers of darkness. About people trying to do you anything. If anybody is trying to do you anything. He's simply a tool in the hand of a bigger enemy. You bind the enemy. The tool is dropped. Glory be to God. If a mechanic wanted to use spanner to loosen the wheel of your car, you shoot the mechanic, the spanner will drop. When you shoot the demons, 
the people he's using are tools. They will drop. They will, nothing will happen. And God says, the authority is already with you. Don't start feeling. If you can feel the authority, then you don't need faith. That's why we walk by faith, not by sight. If you can feel it, you don't need faith anymore. You've already felt it. And that feeling helps you to know it's there. If you can see it, then you don't need faith anymore. If you can see it, you don't need faith to believe that I am speaking to you right now. Because you can hear me with your physical senses. Whatever you can feel, see, touch with the physical senses, you do not need faith for them to operate or to operate with them. Why you need faith in this one is because you cannot feel it. You cannot feel it. If you wait to feel it, you will be deceived by the enemy because he can play with your emotions. So we walk by faith, not by our physical senses. Glory be to God. So get to use your power and the people will see it and they become converted to you. They shall be willing to follow your Jesus. Holiness shall become beautiful for them and the womb of the morning will always bear unto you a renewal. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 You know, what the kind of things people think about throughout the day, where the bad thoughts that I don't align with the Word of God, and the bad things they say that don't align with the Word of God, it, it, it impregnates their morning and causes the next morning to deliver to them depression and anxiety and despair. They have given enough seed to the womb of the morning to conceive. Don't give the womb of your morning the seeds of the enemy to conceive. Give it the seed of the word of God. Give it the seed of the word of God. And that's what you will find the next morning. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. What action is God asking of us now? He's asking for us to believe that the enemy is under our feet. He's asking us to rule, to not close our mouths and not despair in our heart. Believe the word and speak it out authoritatively and rule in the midst of your enemy. Say you should rule. Say so when you do that, you are going to get many people to follow you. And not only that, even your morning will be pregnant with a with seed of heaven and will deliver to you the dew of your youth. You will be renewed every day. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads to pray. Can we just thank the Lord that you did nothing to merit it and yet the enemies are under your feet by the operations of Jesus Christ, by our wonderful Lord and Savior coming to die for us. Take our place. The enemies are under our feet. Let us thank him. Let us thank him. Hallelujah. Bakura to shite kende rapa. Karuba to shanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The enemies are under our feet. Thank you, Jesus. By what you have done, we are now above our enemies. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We exalt you. We adore you. We worship you. Blessed be your name, dear Lord. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next, we're going to pray. <laughs> you are going to confess that you believe that out of your mouth there is a rot. You're going to say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. I am your Zion. And out of my mouth there is a rot. 
There's a rod of authority with which I rule. Lord, help me to be conscious of it and use it. Help me to discern every opportunity to use it and use it without fail. You know, remember the prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, I believe. I believe that out of my mouth there's a rod of authority. There's a rod of authority of heaven by which I should rule. I believe I am the Zion of God. And strength is coming from me. Your strength is coming from me to rule. Now, Holy Spirit, help me to actually rule. Help me to rule. Help me to rule. Let us pray. Let's pray that prayer. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, dear Lord. I believe, dear Father, out of my mouth there is a rod, the rod of authority of heaven. There's a rod of authority of heaven. When I speak, I am releasing authority of heaven. I believe it. I believe it. I am the Zion of God. And the strength of God is flowing from me. Glory be to God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Dear Holy Spirit, help. Help your people. Help your people. Help your people to remember, to be conscious of this fact. And remember to use their authority. Remember to use the authority at all times, whenever there's a need for it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, in Romans chapter, chapter 10, verses 6 to 9 that I quoted before, it says, the righteousness that, that is by faith says, don't say in your heart, who will go up to heaven and bring Christ down? See, what the Bible is saying is this. He said, the kind of covenant, the new covenant that we have in Christ forbids us from saying certain things in our hearts. Forbid us from thinking thoughts of despair. It forbids, uh, it forbids us from thinking thoughts of helplessness. The, the kind of covenant we have with God forbids us from thinking unbelief. From thinking that God doesn't love us. From thinking that God is not there for us. It is demons that will suggest those thoughts to people in order to defeat them. So today you are going to acknowledge those thoughts and say you these all the thoughts of despair thoughts of complaints and murmuring all the thoughts that disarm you of your authority those thoughts you are going to say god purge them from me i never want to entertain them anymore holy spirit help me to raise a barrier against those thoughts god said the righteousness that is by faith says don't say in your heart don't say these kind of things in your heart. Don't say who will go up to heaven and bring Christ down. Don't say who will go down to hell and bring him up. Don't say those things. They disarm you of your authority. And, and make you to be defeated. So tonight, you are going to pray. You are going to bind the demons behind those sayings that you normally embrace in your heart that makes you weak. You are going to bind those demons. Kick them out of your life. In the name of Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Stand up against those things in your heart. Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, we are going to address any situation for which you think an enemy is behind it. Any situation that you think Satan is behind this situation, trying to create difficult times. The Bible said, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It may be human beings that you are negotiating with, but there's someone behind a human being. It's not a flesh and blood. The human being is simply a screwdriver and a spanner. 
Now, for everything you you know that is a every struggle that you are having, you are going to address the powers behind the struggle. You are going to address them. You are going to rule in the midst of your enemy. You are going to speak to them and say, "I command you to desist. I bind you and I destroy the works that you are doing." In fact, before we pray that prayer, I'm going to lead you in a prayer to to resolve every legal ground they may have been given to the enemy. So I want you to pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, over my affairs, over my business. I believe in Jesus. I have the righteousness of Christ. Therefore, I plead the blood of Jesus over every legal ground that I may have yielded to the devil knowingly or unknowingly or by anybody on my behalf. Father, I take back that ground. I kick the devil out of it. Dear Lord Jesus, I hand over that ground to you to occupy it for me. Thank you for hearing me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So right now, you go ahead and bind all the demons behind your struggles. Bind them and destroy their works. Cast them out. The Bible says the rod of the wicked, the authority of the wicked, shall not operate over the domain of the righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not fall upon the lot of the righteous. The authority of the wicked shall not operate over the domain, over the inheritance of the righteous. Bind them and cast them out in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before I pray for us, let's pray for this prayer point. Let's pray for a sister. He said we should pray for God to perfect, perfect the reunion of her parents. That means her parents probably were separated before, and they're coming back together again. Let's pray and ask that that reunion be perfected, that the parents will know Jesus, they will submit to Jesus and and uh, their reunion will be perfected. Let us pray. Yes, Lord, perfect that re reunion, Lord. Perfect it, perfect it, perfect it. Above all, open your eyes to see Jesus. That they might see that through their commitment to Jesus, they can have the life that you created them to have. Thank you, Father, for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's also pray. Another prayer point. Another person say, please uh, pray for God to give me a life partner. That is his will for me. So let's pray for that person. Let's ask the Lord to give that person a life partner. That is his will for that person. Let us pray. Dear Father, we we'll pray for a life partner for the people. That is your will for them. Glory be to Jesus. We we'll pray for a life partner for this person. A life partner that is your will for, for this person. In the name of Jesus. Let the life partner come. Yes, receive, receive, receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And somebody said, say, please pray for my brother, 
for funding for his PhD program and visa for Canada. So let's just join in this prayer and ask for funding that God will send scholarships and funding for this this brother's PhD and a visa for Canada. Let us pray. Dear Father, we pray for this visa. We pray for the funding for this PhD. We ask that you bring it to pass in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bring it to pass in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, he has funding already. It is visa that he needs. Lord, we pray for the visa. Oh God, make it Give him favor, Lord. Give him favor. Give him favor for visa. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. I just want to pray for you right now. I, it has entered my heart. Lord, I've put in my heart to pray for marriages and for people who want to marry. Lord, I pray for all the marriages represented here today. Father, I ask, Lord, that for those who are married, the wine of their relationship will be renewed in the name of Jesus. I ask that new wine begin to flow in those marriages in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that every manipulation of the enemy, manipulation of the enemy, that to cause misunderstandings, disaffections, misinterpretations, all such manipulations, we command them to cease. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we command them to cease in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that the wind of renewed affection will blow upon the marriages among us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. And I pray, O oh God, for people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I pray for people who are in the ve at the verge of committing a sin, committing a sin of adultery, Father, keep them, keep them away from that temptation in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, I pray for them, O oh God, that they will not get into that temptation. Deliver them from it, Father. Deliver them from it. And all the snares, all the traps that Satan has built to push people, push that person into that temptation, we dismantle the traps. We destroy them. It shall not happen in the name of Jesus. All the build of the Satan has made, we command them to crumble right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise. Now, I pray for people who are not yet married and they want to marry. Dear Lord Jesus, even as faith comes by prayer, or by, by uh, faith comes by hearing, Lord, I ask that by this prayer, let their life partners come to them in the name of Jesus. Let their life partners come to them. Let them be able to recognize it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, precious King. We worship you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I, I just feel the Holy Spirit is asking me to tell someone. I don't know how it might minister to that person. You know, you may have heard many people say, Make, marry your friend. Make sure you marry your friends. It's not written in the Bible. It's a wisdom of man. Don't build your life on human wisdom. You marry God, there is no place in the Bible that God says that you should marry the person that you love. He says you should love the person you marry. Go to God, let God lead you. Pray to God, let God lead you. Let God point you to someone. Use priorities taught by Scripture to evaluate the person you are to marry. Be convinced by Scripture and by what the Holy Spirit is saying in your doing in your heart that this is the person to marry and go ahead and marry the person. So do not allow the wisdom of man to box you into a corner and make you forgo opportunities that God has brought to you. Well, I don't know, but the Holy Spirit just brought that to my heart 
and I just have to say it now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you have been blessed in this Wednesday's programs, I want